just starting out, we're probably going to end up. Uh, Cheeto's got a groin. Uh, probably miss him for some weeks at this point. Uh, it's significant enough. Uh, what that timeline is uh, remains to be seen, but I, I would expect him to miss some miss some time. Um, Jeff's got a, an elbow. Simmons has an elbow issue that's probably day to day. Uh, so we'll see what that looks like as the week goes. Thankfully, we have an extra day this week to get ready, and we're approaching our bye week already. Um, so that's that's probably positive in that regard. But uh, other than that, normal normal nicks and bruises from the game and. Um, you know, we'll see where we are when, when the Wednesday report comes out, but those are the only two of, of note that, that should show up. Guys, uh, possibility for Cheeto? Uh, definitely a possibility, yeah. Who, uh, who are some guys you expect to step up in his absence? Um, Jarvis. Yeah. You know, Jarvis has to come. Jarvis has got to play a little bit as he got hurt. Um, but, yeah, Jarvis will be the, be the one filling in for him. We'll obviously uh, have to elevate uh, a DB. You know, probably Trey Avery will get moved up. Um, so we'll see. There's there's a couple different ways and, and to see how that's going to shake out. But um, yeah, we're going to have to have guys step up. As you look at where your team is, and I'm sure there are a number of things you want to fix. What's the number one thing you've got to get done to start winning football games? No, I'm not turning the ball over. That's that's clear as clear as can be. I mean, we're we're last in the league in turnover margin. We're minus seven. Um, you know, those, and that doesn't count the the block punts. So that's to me in my mind, that's minus nine in three games. Um, of those seven turnovers on offense, you know, 14 points directly went back the other way. Uh, one of the punts directly went back the other way, so that's 21 points. Um, I think we've, you know, we've lost two games by seven points and one by 16, and there's your margin. You know, that's that's um, that's a really really hard thing to overcome the volume and the and the, and the frequency of them and how crushing they've been. Um, you know, I've. Even that sack fumble, uh, you know, we're on the thirty-yard line. We're it's a ten, it's a it's a two-score game. It's you know, even if we get a field goal there, or at least it's a ten-point game at the top of the fourth quarter, and it feels a little bit different. Uh, but then you know, we turn we get sack fumbled, and, and the ball gets turned over again. So, um, and then we haven't gotten a, a single turnover on defense uh, through three games, which is uh, I've not seen that very often. That just can't get it to break our way right now. Can't get the ball out. Um, part of that's because. In this game, they, they were able to, to control it pretty well. But, yeah, if you want to look at one single thing right now that's, that's getting in the way of us winning football games, that's that's turning the ball over. And, uh, you know, most of the teams down there with us in the margins, if they're if they're down at minus seven, five, four, three, you know, most of those guys are probably one and two, zero oh and three, whatever that looks like. So the turnover statistics in the NFL are, are glaring. Uh, it's not a mystery. You know, you, you're, in a, you're in a plus. You're well into the plus. You're usually a playoff team. Um, and you're deep in the minuses, you're usually not very very good. Um, and that's just the way it is. So, in talking to various guys about the different issues and it's even different position groups, do your job keeps coming up, but now the word accountability is starting to as well as the head coach. Like, how do you make sure that these guys can better hold each other accountable and how are you going to hold them accountable as well? Well, I think we always, we 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 hold accountable every day. I mean, that's our job um, to be able to, to correct and coach and teach. And then, uh, again, we're trying not to repeat mistakes. And look, I think our guys hold each other accountable. I don't, I don't see that as, as an issue. Um, and sometimes when you're, when you're losing games, the way we've lost, you know, those are just things that come up and, and there's gotta be something that has to be different. Uh, and that's ultimately starts with me and whatever that looks like, whether it's accountability, whether it's, uh, coaching, whether it's position coaches, whatever it is, um, that's something that we got to find. We got to find some answers to because it's not gone the way we thought. Like to be in maybe a competition at right tackle, or you need Nick to settle in and play better, and still going to trust in him. Yeah, well, you know, we'll see. We'll let those let those guys play it out. Um, you know, I think that really at at the core of the game yesterday, Nick played well enough, but his three real bad plays were real bad plays, um, and that's sort of what the issue is. Is it's, it's the consistency. Um, and, and we'll see. Uh, I'm not going to make any commentary on that um, until we get through a week of practice and see where everybody's at. But, um, you know, after that sack fumble, it was just it, we needed to make a change in the moment in the game. And uh, I can't, I'm not going to say that it's a permanent one or, or anything like that. But, um, yeah, we just needed something different uh, at that point. He's obviously under a ton of pressure there, especially in the second half. But is there anything on maybe some of the plays that he can do better to, to help himself in the, in the pressure situations? Or did you just see it as... You really have no chance. Um, there's a couple. Like, you know, we got off we got off off schedule. I mean, some of those third and longs, look, I, I 
could I save could I save him a sack and throw a quick game and be short of the sticks and punt it? Yeah, I can do that. You know, I could definitely do that. Um, but I just felt like I was trying to keep trying to push the ball and see if we could make something happen. The game wasn't over uh, in my mind, and um, you know whether that's the right or the wrong thing to do, uh, we'll figure that out. But um, those ones at the end of the game were tough. There wasn't a whole lot he could do with those, and that's those aren't on him. Um, there's probably one or two in the game that uh, you know we we could have done better jo- a better job all around, and and it's not all on Will either. Um, but yeah, there's just at the end of the day, it's just too many. I mean, we can't take that many sacks, and you know, I got to do a better job of putting us in a better position to not take those sacks. Um, but when you get up against the, you know that front, uh, has kept a lot of teams in third and seven plus over the course of this season, and um, they're good. And we didn't answer the bell very well, and um, you know, the being down two scores doesn't help either when they know you got to throw it. And uh, you like to play the lead against a team like that, and uh, we did not get that accomplished. Last week, that, that b- before this game, that Traylon was one of the best graded receivers in the room. He had one catch for two yards. I think. Mm-hmm. Now he's got two catches for, for 11 yards. What's it take to be a highly graded receiver if you can do that little at your main job and rank that well? Uh, there's a lot of things that go into that. There's a there's the blocking component. There's the route component. Um, but yeah, I mean that's I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. You know, he does his assignments, but he hasn't made any plays on the ball yet, and um, that's their job. Uh, so, yeah, I don't – I mean, as far as doing his job and what's asked of him in every play, yeah, that's part of it. He's done that well. Um, but when the balls come to him, you know, we haven't made enough plays. And that's that's for the offense as a whole. That's not just trailing. We haven't made enough plays on offense uh, to score more than 17 points. What's the other guy that's, that's getting looked to on a, on a deep double as opposed to, to Calvin, who you guys paid a bunch of money for and that you've – Sure. Talked about being the, the sure yeah that's a, that's a that's a fair question and um, you know sometimes the, the you can't control where the ball goes uh, but yeah there's there's times when the ball went up to Trey that you got he's got to go make a play on it um, and then there's times where you like to see the ball go to Calvin and that's just the nature of, of playing receiver and playing quarterback and calling plays is all those things happen sometimes. Probably the last couple of Mondays and said. Basically, you feel like you're close. If we can eliminate the one catastrophic mistake or whatever, yeah. we can win these games. Does it feel different here today? Because there wasn't really the the one mistake that maybe cost you. Does it feel more comprehensive yesterday? Uh, no, I, I don't feel that way. I mean, I still feel like that there's a lot of – I mean, we still did a lot of good things. I mean, we had seven explosive plays yesterday, and, and most places I've ever been, if you rack seven explosive plays, you probably win the game. Um and so that that part's a positive. I thought there was some things that Will did well. Um, you know, we didn't run the ball as well as I thought we would be able to in that game. Part of it, we didn't attempt as many because of the score. Um, should I have called a few more runs? Maybe. Uh, but, yeah, I just don't – I don't feel any different now than I did last week, and that's the – that's just the way it is. I mean, the, the game got away from us. We went they, – they went down and scored. We went down and answered. They went down and kicked a field goal. We get our second possession. We throw a pick six, 17-7, and out, it felt like it was – 25 to 7 at that point um so yeah I, I don't I don't feel that it's anything different than how I felt last week we got to do a better job uh taking care of the football and, and finding ways to score points the this offensive line is having similar to any of the problems that the one in Cincinnati had during Burroughs first couple of years there and how did you go about remedying that situation um yeah I mean it's we're not playing up to the up to what I think our standard is and what we're capable of doing. Um, it's not a situation I haven't seen before. I've been a part of it. Um, but, you know, we did all the things, you know, we we kept people in protection. We had seven and eight in protection. We help on the edges. We threw quick game, all the things that you do. And then uh, where the trouble r- arose was in a third and longer situation. We were trying to push the ball down the field. And that uh, that ended up not good for us. But, yeah, I mean, there's we've, we we throw screens. We do all the things that, that we try to do to, to help the offensive line and keep the front uh, at bay and a little bit off balance. And, um, you know, sometimes they the games work that way and sometimes they don't. But um, as far as trying to make sure we're, we're putting guys in the right positions, you know, that's our job and we got to do a better job of it. Strategy-wise strategy with that, uh, mm-hmm. what are the pros and cons of moving the pocket more? With Will's athleticism, is, is there a benefit to getting him outside more or does that just kind of create – more problems. No, no, there's there's benefit to it. I mean, it's part of it. We've we've ran a handful of, of movements. Um, yeah, there's it's all part of the equation. Points time to throw yesterday was uh, astonishingly low. Will, on the other hand, um, 
out of all of the recent Titans and Bengals quarterbacks has the the lowest percentage of passes in, out in two and a half seconds or less. Is that conducive to success when you're struggling to protect in pass protection? Is he getting the ball out quickly enough, in your opinion? Yeah, at times, and at times, no. I mean, it's, you know, when the, the time would tell you that that's, you know, there's some plays that um, you'd like to get the ball out faster. And that's, again, some of that's design and scheme and trying to push the ball down the field a bit. Um, but some of it is we got to get the ball out faster too. And again, those are all things that I, I got to help him with and do a better job of, of calling those plays. You see that as an easy fix or is it more complicated than that? Just getting the ball out faster. I mean, nothing, it's never that easy. You know, that's never, it's, it's, that's usually not how it works. Um, there's more to it than just that, but uh, at its, at its bare, bare minimum. Yeah. There's, there's some of that that could help. And uh, like I said, I got to do a better job of doing that. Experiencing any strain between your two jobs, like maybe the timeout between deciding to punt or, or go for it? Is that a head coach versus offensive coordinator moment? No, that one was. I mean, we were third and fourteen, and um, you know, when you when you gain that amount of distance on a third and fourteen, where it all of a sudden initially didn't look like it was that close, and then it was about a yard and a half, uh, and the punt team had already sort of taken the field. There was there was bodies on and off and so I knew I wanted to go for it once I saw that it was close enough I liked the play selection we had for it um, so I took the time out just because we were already sort of in transition and so I didn't want to put us in a spot where we were scrambling and taking a delay game so I just took the time out um, to go for it so that was that was more the timing of the the timing and the down and distance in that spot like you're not expecting necessarily to get to a fourth and one um, and I thought that we needed something in that moment to try to keep keep the drive alive and in a down and distance that we could get it um, and if it worked out, it would have been great, and, and it didn't. But that part wasn't really anything um, management-wise that was a problem. I just knew that I wanted to go for it, uh, and there was a bunch of bodies coming on off the field with the punt team, so I just took the time out in that spot. Both, or is there any? I do, yeah. I do. I feel very comfortable with both. I, you know, I got good help, too. There's people that help me upstairs and do a really good job with that stuff, and um, that part's been incredibly helpful for me. So, yeah, I, I don't feel any strain in that regard. That hesitation you mentioned at times with, with Will, is there any correlation, do you think, to to the turnovers and maybe second-guessing himself just a, just a split second? Um, I mean, no, I, the, like I said, after the game, I, I feel the same way about that. I mean, it's he's, he's trying to take a quick game throw, and, and Jair jumped it um, pretty good. And some, you know, if you've, if you've played enough football, you maybe feel that that demeanor of that DB and you, and you pull off that throw. But um, it was on time. It was where it was supposed to be, and, and he jumped it. The fumble was he didn't really have much like him to hold on to it, but those those turnovers I don't know that are in that particular case are, are the ones that right. I'm worried about. I was trying to ask was because of the turnovers. Yeah. Had, I was wondering if there's any hesitation. Gotcha. You know, where he's kind of second guessing. Um, I don't feel that right now from him. I don't feel the second guessing or hesitation. Um, you know, two of the two of the plays on third down uh, that were were challenging is that they hadn't you know limited sample size of tape they hadn't shown any 11 alert coverage on third and seven so we called the zone play uh, for and we got man coverage and so it forced them to hold the ball they wouldn't have anything open it wasn't designed to beat man um, and that's one of the sacks we ended up taking um, so it looks like he might be hesitant but really it's because it's you know we're not we don't we don't hit on the coverage versus the play and he didn't have a good answer um, and then the same thing happened on the third and two to three on a sack where um you know, we had a man and zone cam for the same thing. They masked it really, really well. They hadn't shown to do that. Um, so it looks and feels like man coverage. They drop out in the zone behind it. Um, good disguise on their part. Hadn't shown that either. So there's a there's a, a processing quickness that has to happen a little bit. Like, oh, this is not what we think it is. Um, but that's why defenses do it, because it causes the quarterback to pause and the p pass rush to get there. And so that that's those are things that I don't necessarily put on Will and as far as processing goes or trying to get it out. Um, those are really on me, and that's that's you know that sucks. I don't like the way that feels, but that happens sometimes. What those the play clock continues to kind of drain almost all the way down to zero. What's what's causing the the communication maybe to take so long, and is that something you'd like to speed up? Um, yeah, I haven't really, I haven't felt it. I haven't felt like we've been, um, you know, some of the some of the third down things maybe here and there, but um, I haven't felt that. I didn't. I don't. I know it runs down. I mean, it usually is running down pretty good most times. But um, yeah, I mean, we can we can increase our tempo, sure. Uh, but that's not something I really had had felt at this point. With those situations that you mentioned, you know, how do you go about where there may be a predetermined read, but post snap it's different? Like, how do you go about 
making sure that he has that adjustment and doesn't mm -hmm. have that hesitation or throws to uh, a place where he puts the ball in harm's way. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's an experience thing. That's seeing it and doing it. Um, that's that's why it's hard to play quarterback in the NFL. Uh, that's why it takes guys time to, to see those things. Um, so, yeah, it, to me, it's just a, it's an experience thing uh, of knowing and feeling and, and an experience in a system, too, on top of it, of knowing – Knowing answers and where your where your your throw might be versus that particular coverage, it's all about uh, banking reps and experience and and what you're being asked to do. And I think that's uh, part of it. That's where we've had some struggles at times too, is just the the newness and not having all the the reps involved in it. And um, it's it happens two three seconds, you know, milliseconds quicker when you've when you got reps banked and you've done it a bunch. And that's that's where experience becomes a factor in in playing the position and playing in the offense. To after the pick six, it may have felt even worse than it actually was mm -hmm. in that moment. Oh, and three, I'm sure it feels pretty bad too. Yeah. You have to guard this week to making sure your team keeps a level of confidence and doesn't panic of where you are right now. Yeah, I think you you, you got against that as best you can all, all the time. You know, it, it, there's rough stretches in every NFL season. Uh, every team has um, a stretch where. You know, they probably drop a game or two or lose a game they shouldn't or drop three in a row. I mean, it happens. It happens to everybody. Um, you know, that's why you're seeing, you know, everybody makes the playoffs. There's teams that lose five, six games, seven games, and uh, that's the reality of the NFL football season, and it's still really early. We haven't played anywhere close to what we're capable of playing, uh, and I think that our guys know that, and my job is to make sure we keep pushing forward and, and we still – feel like we got to go play football games. I mean, we got a whole lot left. There's a lot of football left to play, um, and we got to find a way to play better. Why you Amy today, and what kind of vibe does she have? Uh, I usually call uh, Amy usually on Monday afternoons. Um, I'll call her this afternoon. I, I sometimes see her after games, depending on, um, you know, what she's got going on. But uh, I'll call her today, and I'll, I'll have that news for you some other time. How do you start that conversation on a day like today? That's pretty straightforward. I just kind of go through what what happened in the game, what went wrong, where we got to get better. Um, let her ask questions that she has, and um, that's just kind of how, to me, for good communication works. And uh, we've had great communication so far through all the things up to this point, and I don't think that'll change. So, um, pretty normal operation. Who are some of the people that you're leaning on right now? Uh, all the guys that that, that work here. You know, uh, we got really good coaches and guys that have been around a long time. They've seen things like this before, so. Uh, you know, there's obviously helps to have my dad here. He's done a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, Randy Jordan and Frank Bush and Ben Bloom and guys that have all been doing this a while. Those guys all are um, really, really helpful uh, in these moments. And um, I got people outside of here that, that I do have conversations with about that, um, about being a head coach and all the things that come with it. And um, Zach Taylor is still a, a confidant of mine and someone that I lean on as well. So, um, yeah, I got I got people that that I, I seek advice from and I seek input from. Um, is there a reason that you can kind of put your finger on as to why this team is things bogged down, especially the second half and especially the fourth quarter? No points in the fourth quarter yet this year. No, I, I can't put my finger on it. I, I mean, I you know we try to keep staying aggressive offensively. We we were in position to score points there at the top of the third, turn the ball over. Um, but yeah, I mean. You're going to have a hard time winning the NFL if you can't win the fourth quarter. Uh, that's where most of these games are decided anyway, and uh, and we haven't done enough a good enough job of that. And hence, we're we're now at 0 and 3. We haven't won a game, so that part of it is is it's critical. You got to be good in the fourth quarter, and we haven't been. Good. Oh. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. You said it helps having your dad here to lean on. I'm, I'm curious after the offensive line has a day like it did yesterday. What are those conversations like with your O line coach, given the unique relationship that you have? Yeah, just like every other offensive line coach in, in the league, I mean, we, we evaluate what went wrong and why and where. Uh, what do we have to do to fix it? Um, what do we have to do schematically to help it? Um, those are all things that, that are normal course of conversation um, amongst our entire offensive staff, but certainly between him and I. And um, that's what our job is, and, and we got to find a way to get it better. I'll, I'll, come, I'll go back here. Uh, similar question, though. Dad obviously has a – greatly deserved reputation for what he's done with the offensive line. Are you surprised that, that we're not seeing a quicker impact with this group so far? No, I mean, I, I, I think we're capable of playing better. Um, I, I think that JC's really played pretty well. Um, that part's been encouraging. I'm, I'm excited about JC. Uh, I think Pete's played pretty good. 
and I think that Lloyd's done a nice job. And you know, that's it's it's really the our our right sides had struggles really the last two weeks, and, and we got to find a way to help that and fix that. Um, but there is there is good things happening and encouraging things happening. We just got to have it collectively, uh, offensively happen more. And um, so yeah, I, and and I knew we, I knew when the minute the schedule came out, I looked at the teams we had to play, and I knew the fronts that we were going to face, and, and it was going to be a challenge for us. Um, we played three fronts that I think are as good as any in football and um, not played as well as I was hoping we would play. And uh, we got to find a way to play better. When the season starts, you're limited on the number of padded practices you can have. Mm -hmm. How do you decide when to utilize those? And with Monday Night Football this week, is this a week to do that? Uh, you only get one. You, uh, maybe clarify the question. Don't you get like 12 padded practices yeah, for the season? Yeah, you get so. 12. I mean, we... we 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 have always and probably will this year is we, we take that one day of pads and we use it and we use it for 12 straight weeks and then I think the rules change as you get through 12 weeks and you only get two out of the last whatever weeks there are but I mean yeah we'll, we'll stay in pads as, as long as we as long as we're allowed to um, because we need the work and um, that's just what it is I've always felt that way and the only time we ever come out, come out of the pads is if for some reason you got a, a bunch of injuries that are affecting your ability to practice um, but the intent is to be in pads every time that they allow you. Wednesday? Last one. Uh, Thursdays are padded days, yeah. But again, let, I, let me clarify. Wednesday. Of the practice week. Thursday is the padded practice, yeah. I'm familiar with this offensive system, but what do you feel like the, the overall offensive, uh, I guess, comfort factor is with the with this new scheme at this point? Um, Yeah, for me, it's, you know, I know the ins and outs of it, but, you know, it's, it's easy said than done with me saying it because this is a new offense for everybody else. You know, and, and, and I know how this offense works, and, and it works great. we got so many different schemes, it's kind of hard to uh, game plan everything, you know. But um, I think we just got to get on one accord. That's it, you know, and, and I just think we got to play for one another. You know, I think the relationship and the chemistry isn't quite there. You know, I think we need to just uh, – just, just, just compete harder, you know, each and every play, and don't look back to, you know, we threw the pick six early in the game. Still early, first quarter, a second drive, like, we can still bounce back, you know. So um, I'm not saying that I didn't, that I felt the energy dying out, but, like, it is what it is. Like, we're not going to use that as our cop-out, you know, to um, not get the job done, you know. But um, I just think, because uh, it, it was kind of the same thing when I was in Cincy, man. It just, it just takes a little bit of time, you know, but the sooner the better. You know, we can't wait till you know the end of the season and start trying to get wins you know it has to start now you know and um i mean i think we're going we're, we're down the right path we're, we show flashes in every game we show flashes we just got to be more consistent and just take it play by play and we'll be fine in burrow's first couple of years in cincinnati the, the protection wasn't always up to snuff and it's kind of been similar here so far this year what were some of the ways that brian and the staff adapted to compensate for that yeah um i mean like, like the scheme wise we just got to kind of uh depending on the team and how they structure their defense or how good their front ends i mean we got to kind of just figure out their weak points you know we, we 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 may have to um quit game a lot more than usual we might have to run a little bit more you know and and i mean it's, it sucks to say sometimes we got the, we got a great receiver trio here and other great receivers too but like sometimes we might not get as much targets we might not you know be able to show our competitiveness or show our abilities to help the team at a time so we just got to all buy in if we got to block all the time and the run game is in that's what we got to do you know so it just depends like everybody has to buy in you know and back to the borough thing it was the same thing that happened you know the line not really um holding it down as much as we needed to but at the same time we still got to figure out ways to make plays, you know, and then Burrow found ways to make plays. And I know Will can as well because he's a little bit more athletic, you know, uh, in terms of uh, his mobility and things like that, you know. So I think just um, him being in detail with what we're trying to scheme up and just, just take what the defense is giving him. Though just keep take, t taking the short route. Don't, don't keep staring things down. I'm not saying that's what he's doing, but I'm just saying, like, based off my pass uh, in this offense, just, just throw, chuck it down to the running back. Make them play a certain coverage, then that's when things are going to open up for the receivers, you know, make them, force them into coverages where it's going to eliminate the under throws and the short throws. And that's when we can start hitting them, the holes behind the linebackers and things like that. But um, I think we just got to, 
Oh, man, it's just, it's just, we just got to all tie it in together at, at, at some point. We got great players around across the board, you know, with any position you name, we have great players. You know, I think, like I said, we just got to get on one accord. In terms of deficiencies in the passing game, you mentioned the receiving core, how good you guys are, but how much more can you help Will and make plays for the quarterback as opposed to, you know, all the fingers that are being pointed at him? Yeah, um... We, we 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 try to make every play that that comes our way, you know, just to help him, regardless of how the pass looks and things like that. Cause you know he's under a lot of stress and things like that. We know uh, he's been through a lot with the social media, um, and he's been getting a lot of you know static from them guys, and he's trying to block that out at the same time, play good, you know. But at the end of the day, I mean, we just gotta have his back, you know, just like he got our back, you know. If he make a mistake. We got to ride with that, you know. We still a team, you know. But the only thing we can do is just go out there and help make a play to uh, make him forget about that uh, bad play that he made, you know, and vice versa. This is how football is, you know. Football is just, it's a crazy game, man. Like if you don't got eleven guys out there dominating at once and out executing uh, their job more than the other guy across from them, then I mean, it's, it's you gonna fall short every time, you know. And like like I said, man, we should have uh, Green Bay was a great team, you know, but um. It, we just didn't. Just, we just didn't tie it in. We just didn't tie it together. What's the feeling as you guys came in here today, and what's the confidence level you guys can can get this ship righted and get get on track? Yeah, man, it's just uh, just confidence. You know, we just got to continue to just uh, speak it. You know, just, just just try not to hang our heads and and, and and put our heads down. And I mean, it's a tough time. I, I didn't been around it, so I mean, me coming in, I didn't feel any type of stress or. Uh, doubt that we still can't get the job done. Because if you look in the conference, it's, it's, you got two wins with Texans and Colts got a one win. And, I mean, it's still winnable. You know, it, we're, 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 we're not in week 10, week 11, 12, you know, where it's time to put this time. Like, you got to go, you know. Um, like, all of us, we, we yet, we no no guy has played a perfect game. You know, the offense have, hasn't planned perfect yet. And um, once we start to get that feel and just – have that confidence, man. I just, I just, I, I don't really know what it is yet. That's why we gotta continue to watch the tape and get better every day. But um, we have a legit team. Like this is a Super Bowl caliber team on paper. But at the end of the day, we gotta go out there and prove that. So I mean, you mentioned that the relationship and the chemistry maybe not quite there yet for everybody in terms of the offensive scheme. Aside from from pass protection, which is pretty obvious to everyone, is there a thing or two that that you say needs to be? ironed out most in order to get that completed? Um, I mean, I, I couldn't say because this ain't the last, this ain't the, the last team that we're going to play that we're going to go against a crazy front. You know, there's, there's guys in this league that's going to get after the quarterback, you know, so we just got to figure out ways to uh, give Will outlets, quick throws and have give him ways to get rid of the ball sooner and, and not holding back as much, you know, because, I mean, like, like you watch that game and everybody look at the line, like our line is terrible. Like, we don't really have a terrible line. You know, we just got to make different adjustments. We maybe we wasn't prepared for certain stunts and looks that they was giving us, you know, because they didn't really have a lot of stuff on tape. They got new coaches. They got a whole new structure, how they how they run operation. And, um, I mean, that's, that's just something you got to kind of deal with as you're playing football. You, know, you got to kind of try to figure out ways – on, on, on the go, you know, it was probably certain fronts that we didn't even prepare for at all, you know. So um, I, I, would, I don't uh, put none of that on the O line, you know. We just gotta uh, figure out how we can eliminate that, you know. Maybe we gotta do a little bit more chips on the ends, you know, with the receivers, which I do usually in this offense, you know. But um, we we started behind, so we kind of had to kind of force it and throw it as much usually, you know, because we're kind of a a, a balanced team, you know. We kind of didn't run as much as we wanted to, 30, 30 yards, I think. And, you know, that's not good enough, you know. So we got to kind of relieve this, that stress or pressure, you know, we're going to come out and pass it, you know, it will make it harder for the line, you know, to make the blocks every single time. Were those couple of series in the third where Hop really got going, the closest you've seen to this offense, this passing offense being the rhythm you expect from it? And just kind of how do you have more series like that where the passing offense stays in rhythm? Yeah, like I said, we, we, we show flashes on drives. We, we show flashes. Like, we show – that we're a, a great offense, you know, if if we're on, we're doing the same thing, if we're all on the same page, you know, but uh how gonna be hop, he's gonna go make his plays, you know, but um it's just w once we're all doing our job right, it's gonna continue to flow right, you know, and this is the same kind of same same thing I went through 
on a rebuilding phase in Cincy. You know, I, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you might feel down, might feel embarrassing. You know, it just might have that sickness in your stomach. Like, start to second guess it. You know, but um, you know, I'm gonna do a good job of just uh, picking every guy up. And I, I don't, I didn't, I don't feel that right now. You know, everybody, it sucks to lose. Period. You, it's gonna be some type. Uh, uh, feelings in the locker room, you know, but I think we do a good job. We got a lot of vets on this team, man, and, and a lot of ga guys came from teams that they've been through this, you know, so we can't just point the finger because once you get to point the finger at guys, whether you're on defense or offense, uh, you're going to start to kind of think like, well, well, you got my back, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's not on that. I don't think that, but you do also got to hold guys accountable and let them know, like, we got we to gotta tighten up. We got to do better because if, if I'm out there and I'm dropping passes and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, I expect you to um, get after me. You know, let me know because you, you don't see that uh, in me when I'm practicing. You know, I try to be at, at my best. So, I mean, if I, if I come at you in a way to where I need you to step up and you feel like it's, it's some type of way, just know that, like, I care. Like, I, I believe in you. That's why we're here, you know. So, I mean, just, just, just be able to take accountability. The tight window ball that you caught – from Will on the first touchdown drive. Is that evidence that there is belief in him that he can do this job? Yes, absolutely. It's crazy that you said that because uh, the specific route that I had, um, I was supposed to uh, go outside. It was supposed to be an outside throw, you know, but the linebacker uh, pushed outside. So I wrapped him and just played with Phil, you know, being a football player. And that's why uh, I know this offense because I just know um, we didn't really, like I said, we didn't game plan to run that play against that type coverage. So, I mean, you just, just just seeing Will sitting there comfortable and still knowing that I'm going to be in a spot where he know I should be, uh, it shows a lot. It goes a long way. You know, it shows that he can trust me. He shows that um, that when, when, when things isn't going right or he's not used to seeing a certain coverage or he felt like that might not be the throw, you just, just got to trust it. You got to trust in your guys knowing that, like, I'm going to always find that spot and I avoid, I'll always find that void and, 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 and try to make that play for you every single time. Playing good defense kind of when it mattered less and playing bad defense when it matters most. Have you gotten your head around how that's happening, why that's happening, and how to change it? Um, I think it starts back, you know, going back to the basics, um, just executing the little things a lot better than we have. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for us defensively, making the stops when, when, when we need them um, and coming in through those key moments is that that's what we have to improve on to, to help us get over this hump. Some of those third downs, like third and 13, third and 18, and they were getting first downs. Like, how frustrating is that as a defense, you know, when those types of things are happening? Um, that's definitely frustrating. Um, once you get the third down, defenses, we always talk about it, it's money down. It's where we make our make our money, get offenses off the field. Um, and for them to extend those drives when we got them backed up like that, that's definitely frustrating. But again, I think that goes back to us not, you know, executing the little things. Um, not all 11 doing the assignment, assignments correctly. It seemed like in the first game at Chicago that there were two or three balls that were batted up into the air or fumbles that, you know, were there for the taking, maybe that weren't. But the last couple of weeks, it seems like there's not even really been a lot of opportunities for them, you know, to get turnovers. Right. Why do you think that's happening? I mean, these offenses, they're doing a great job protecting the football. Um, we haven't been fortunate ups. Uh, except for, you know, in Chicago, we had batted balls up in the air. We haven't had those. Um, running backs are taking care of the ball. Um, receivers getting the ball, getting down. So they're just protecting the ball well. We got to do, we got to fight tooth and nail just to get it off them, whatever, any way possible. And that's what we got to do. What, what's, uh, what's it like watching film of the game yesterday? And what do you anticipate the, the messaging or, or the vibe would be like in the building this, this week as you get ready for another one? I'm um, watching the film. Um, it's the same thing I thought. It's just, it's just. I think for us, it's execution, execution, execution. Those little things matter, um, and we haven't done a good job, well enough job of getting those things done. But I think for us, um, if you watch the film as a player, you know that there's things you need to correct that we all need to correct, and we just got to go do it so we can get over this hump. What would you say the attitude is among players in the locker room after this one? Everybody's eager to get a win. We got to go out and get a win. Ready to get, you know, get in front of the world on Monday Night Football. Do what we got to do and fight tooth and nail, like I've said before, to get this win because we got to, we got to get one. You look at a lot of their runs this past game. Then in the other two, it's getting to the outside. Right. What is happening there to keep those runs from, you know, allowing those explosives like that? Um. 
Um, I, I, I really don't know. I, I mean, I, I hate to keep pinpointing back at this, but I think it's just we got to do our job. If, we, if you got to set the edge, we got to set the edge well. Teams know that, you know, in the middle we're stout. Not too many going to run straight through the defense. Um, so they have to use those, their tools and stuff to get on the edge. And um, credit to the Packers, they did a lot yesterday. They they had a great scheme as far as how they wanted to execute us, execute their run game, and they did it to perfection. But for us, we have to set um, set tight edges, set set tight, send the ball back in to where the cavalry is. I know you said you didn't want to go back to it, but it's an answer we continue to get. Mm -hmm. Do your job. Each of you guys are saying that. How are you holding each other accountable to where it's like, okay, do your job or this is going to happen? That's the biggest thing, accountability. You said it. Um, you, you, you get in these locker rooms, you just have to, you know, talk talk to your teammates, talk to your players. Um, there's a there's a side of where the coaches can come in and say this this and that, but then there's a, a side where the players have to go out there and play and execute. Um, so for us, I mean, we were talking about it in the locker room. We just got to do a better job, um, do our job to best our ability, and be where we need to be at the right spots when 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 it's time. In the past, when you've been in a position where you weren't doing your job, or when teammates have been in that position, how often does that actually get fixed? How often do people actually go from not doing their job? Oh, it gets fixed fast. You got to get it fixed fast because it's the National Football League. Somebody, they'll find somebody that will do their job. Even if they're not a good enough player, they'll find somebody just to do it. So it, it, I, I believe it's going to get fixed. I don't see why uh, it wouldn't. We're grown men. We got a job to do. And if the job that we're doing isn't getting it done, then we got to figure out what we can do to get it done. Ernest, it seems like getting turnovers can be really cyclical. They either count in bunches or they don't come at all. Can you, you rely on anything in your career where you've been in a stretch where it doesn't feel like it's happening? Right. And then what do you do to put yourself in a position where all of a sudden they come? That's what it is. I mean, for me, turnovers, you know, you have those turnovers where you go out there, you punch a ball off a guy and you get it out. But a lot of them, it's, it's where, you know, a quarterback may throw the ball too far inside on – inside on the route where a defender's there to get the ball. So those opportunities haven't happened for us. We haven't been blessed with opportunities where our quarterback is just giving us those um, passes. So for us, we got to attack the rock. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's going back through the film and seeing how many times our guys conscious and focused on attacking the ball. And I, I would say we, we hadn't had that many. Um, so that's, that's where we got to start. We got to be better at that. How much of that is putting the quarterback in uncomfortable situations? Have you been able to do that enough? Yeah, I think we've had, you know, we've had the the, the quarterbacks dead to right sometimes, um, and then you know we slip up back to just not every, not all eleven being on the same page. Um, so yeah, I mean, he said it. They come in bunches. Once you get one, you you get that zero off the board. Then they start to roll. So. We got to get one before we can get two, three, four. You listening to anything out there right now, or are you, you shutting yourself off from the world? What's that? To what people are saying out there? Um, for me, I'm kind of different. That stuff, like, it doesn't bother me, but it, it motivates me. Um, I don't want nobody to sit here and say anything, you know, bad about me. So I continue to try to get my improvement and, and get better. Um, and I feel like that's where the guys are in the locker room. So for me. I don't shut down when you people start throwing stuff at us. I run towards it. So, you talked I don't, I don't. about a previous time in your career where it, your team was able to flip around because you guys caught a bye. Yeah. I guess you guys have a huge opportunity to, to get the win, kind of get the monkey off your back before catching a bye here. How big could that be for your season as a whole? I think that's going to be big. I, I mean, I lean on past experience. Um, last year we went. Um, we're a ten and seven football team with the Rams, um, but we didn't start off like that. We weren't too good early on, but we we caught caught that caught caught a win right before the bye, and then we came back and we're just rolling. So I feel like those things that helps you get to get to get away a little bit, reset your mind, and then you come back knowing that we got what eleven, ten straight weeks. So you got to go get it. So that that's that's the biggest thing for me is you know really just getting this win this week, and then let's let's get ready to go into the bye. There are, Coach a Kelly. New, there are a lot of new faces on this, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, including yourself. Right. Are guys on the same page and used to each other at this juncture of the season, or are you still working that out? I believe so. Um, I mean, I, I can't really speak to the totality of the team because I've only been here a couple weeks. I'm still trying to learn everybody and, 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 
and earn the respect from my peers. Um, so I, I believe this team's is closest group that I've ever been around, um, honestly. So we all want to get the win. We all want to do better, and I think we will do that. I think you used the expression, nobody's going to come save us. I think some other players said that in the locker room yesterday, too. How much are you guys looking at yourselves? we got to get this figured out, and how confident are you? Things can get turned around here and, and right the ship. Um, that's why I'm confident in this group. I, uh, around this time, people start to point fingers and try to put it on one side of the ball or put it on one player when it's, it's not that. It's a total group effort. Everybody knows that. Everybody in this locker room knows that there's opportunities and places where you can play better. Um, and I feel like we'll do that.